All right, welcome to our viewers. Thanks so much for joining us for our Petabytes and Popcorn Protect Your Data During Uncertain Times virtual event. Joining us today is Amit Roilani, the Director of Solutions Marketing for Cloudian. Thank you, Audrey, uh, and to everybody, welcome to Petabytes and Popcorn. Um, even the popcorn is virtual. <laughs> what a time. Um, we are sheltered in place, everybody's working from home, kids are home from school, school is virtual. What would we have done without technology? And thank God for technology. This is definitely uncertain times, but we're resilient and we will definitely overcome these hardships. Even in these uncertain times, we are generating data everywhere, right? We're gonna, we, we're gonna talk here about how the data that we're generating is our lifeblood and what we need to do to protect this data and what are the kind of things that we need the data to be protected from, right? So data has been protected, uh, being generated everywhere. Um, you look at uh, universities and pharmaceuticals which are deep in research. I'm sure virology is one of the top research targets and uh, sequencing the genes of uh, not just the coronavirus but also other viruses is top of the list right now. All of these things generate a lot of data. It's, it's troves and troves of data uh, with gene sequencing and trying to find more, uh, more ways uh, to um, attack these kind of diseases and so on and so forth. We're generating a lot of data in our enterprises. Everything is virtual. We are, um, we are, we are creating more content than ever in our businesses and everything is digital. From a business continuity perspective, a lot of this data that's been created is, is the lifeblood of our business. Images and media. Everybody is on a Zoom or a WebEx call these days. Collaboration is a huge thing and generating videos and storing these videos, you need some way to manage this data. Security and surveillance needs will not be stopped with uh, any of these uh, um, uncertainties that we have. Uh, and of course, from a backup and archive perspective, data is your lifeblood. You are backing up. There's a lot of data being moved and uh, generated as we speak with all of these things. So what are the challenges that we face today? With all of the business critical data being generated, organizations that deal with and utilize this important asset will be better the better they utilize it, the better position they are for success. The challenges that most of these organizations face is in managing and storing this critical asset. The growth of this data, most of you guys have seen uh, this chart or a similar chart before, right? The data growth is exponential. We've heard that story. And now, with everything being virtual, even more technology is being used and even more data is being generated. Right. In 2020 itself, the world had been projected to generate more than 9,000 exabytes of data. I'm sure that's gone up by a couple of more exabytes. And, and uh, the biggest challenge that most of the enterprises face is how do you deal with this huge growth in data? You need platforms that scale and are able to store the data and make it accessible for you at a moment's notice. Right. Cloud is definitely a very important technology development that helps us manage this data deluge. By cloud, what we mean here is not just the public cloud, but also the private cloud. Today's enterprise world is really a hybrid cloud world, right? There are multiple reasons why you go hybrid cloud than just uh, all public cloud. Uh, the, the reasons can uh, vary from security concerns, privacy concerns, just uh, from the concerns of uh, network delays and what have you, and also from a cost perspective. So what we see in the, in the market today is hybrid cloud, multi-cloud is, is, is the key to managing all this data deluge from all aspects. And getting into the crux of the matter, right? All the data that you've, you've generated and is critical to your business, this needs protection. So you may ask, what, what kind of protections are you talking about? So there are two aspects of protection that we look at. There's 
the internal needs, internal protection needs. Uh, what we mean by that is protecting this data against accidental deletion. Uh, you always have this the, the, the employees that uh, uh, are working in collaboration and uh, in by mistake would delete data that's been um, that's been saved for other reasons. And how do you how do you uh, protect your data against that? There's the malicious insider, the uh, the employee that uh, has just been laid off and uh, just before leaving the company will go and uh, attack you um, attack your most important asset there's employee retaliation in terms of you have the, that coworker that uh, is trying to retaliate against something that you do and has deleted some data that's uh, important to a certain part of the business and then of course there's evidence tampering now whether it is from uh, businesses that use uh, digital evidence uh, for uh, legal purposes or I even uh, in the in the case of uh, of trying to make sure that your business is just and uh, and equitable in nature so there are multiple needs from an internal data perspective but there's more and even more uh, important to talk about right now is the external threats to your data now this is the this is threats coming from ransomware malware hackers rogue employees and so on and so forth specifically getting into ransomware right ransomware is one of the most prevalent and growing fastest growing malware threat there is uh, out there today <clears throat> it's targeting users of all sizes uh, starting from the, the the smallest mom and pop businesses to the largest of enterprises the way ransomware works is it uh, infects your system uh, and gets over uh, the firewalls and uh, what it does is it targets your user data and it uh, targets it by either encrypting the data or locking up your system the the bigger challenge is when the uh, when the ransomware actually goes after your data and completely shuts it down now it goes after not just your source data but also the backup data and makes it useless um where it resides right and uh, most of the ransomware attacks are attacks where uh, uh, they will lock up your system and uh, ask for uh, ransom holding your data hostage and the ransom is uh, usually demanded in untraceable cryptocurrencies uncertain times are definitely fertile ground for malicious actors if you look at what's happening in the, in, in the world today you see russians attacking the north carolina city and county government systems for and holding their data for ransom multiple reports of coronavirus new uh, being used as a clickbait to infiltrate enterprise system to execute ransomware attacks you look at hackers it's a heartbreaking news but hackers are are, are going after hospitals which are and labs which are on the front line of, why, of fighting this battle for us and uh, holding this uh, their data for ransom and given uh, the situation we are in there is uh, there's no other uh, alternative but to just pay off the ransom and get going with the more critical task at hand even the who um testing lab was hit uh, with an opportunistic attack uh, for ransomware if you look at how the the cyber security and infrastructure agency uh, is looking at this uh, this is the, the the arm of the department of homeland security it is looking as covid-19 being one of the biggest uh, uh, clickbaits to be uh, that's being uh, uh, exploited by malicious cyber actors and they've issued an alert to that effect and that's a big deal they don't usually uh, do it uh, frivolously it's, it's it is it is being used as a as a pretty big uh, it's a pretty big challenge for us right now even before the pandemic hit ransomware was uh, listed as the top 5 risk to world economy uh, in the world economic forum in that was in 2019 december of 2019 we've seen more than 4000 attacks per day and uh, us fbi has reported that these attacks are growing at 97% year over year 51% of the companies pay these ransoms 8 billion dollars of cost 
the businesses in 2018 alone. And the average cost per attack is over 150,000 US dollars. More than just the ransom that, that gets paid for these attacks, it is the downtime in the business and the reputational loss for the business that is a bigger impact and it in fact goes unaccounted for. So how do you protect against uh, protect your data against malicious actors as well as these external threats that we talk about today, right? Whether it's internal or external, your best defense and the baseline data protection uh, for these is backup, backup, backup. You have a clean backup, you can typically recover whether it is uh, accidental deletion or it's a malicious uh, player uh, within your organization or, or external to your organization, you should be able to recover uh, without much uh, loss to your business. But in these uncertain times, these hackers are getting sophisticated. Even though organizations have um, robust firewalls and uh, big security measures in place, all you need is one weak link within your organization to click on that one click bait. And the hacker has, uh, a sophisticated hacker is within, within your firewalls. These sophisticated firewalls, uh, uh, hackers are actually privy to the information that most of the bigger organizations at least are taking backups. So the, the, the primary target these days is not just the primary data source, but also the backup data source. <clears throat> the the hackers will go after these backup sources and uh, will encrypt the data where it stays, making it unusable for the business and bringing the business to its knee. So how do you actually protect the data in these uncertain times? So, so we look at uh, a paper from Forrester and they talk about the technologies that are required to get um, immunity from from ransomware attacks. And the key message from this paper, I've, I've highlighted it over here, is implementing an immutable file system with an underlying worm storage that will make the system watertight from a ransomware protection perspective. And I'll get it a little bit into what worm storage is and what data immutability means in that sense, right? Bottom line, data immutability with a worm storage is the key in today's world to protect your data against these malicious threats. A quick plug here, let's meet Cloudian. Uh, we are here to talk about how Cloudian is, is a key um, platform that can enable you to uh, protect your data against uh, these uh, threats in today's world, right? Cloudian is an on-prem storage system. It is, it is an S3 compatible object storage system and the core capability of, uh, of uh, Cloudian is to store exabytes of data, structured, unstructured, and it can start small, uh, as low as 100 terabytes, and scale up to hundreds of petabytes. The support for all the major cloud vendors over here, uh, we do work in the hybrid cloud uh, environment. Um, the key features for Cloudian uh, it starts with the S3 protocol. It is a completely uh, S3 native object storage system. It is built from the ground up for uh, S3 workloads. So this is uh, this is the API set that uh, AWS in, uh, introduced to the world about 10 years back, and they all they also have their own product, which is a public cloud based offering, AWS S3, um, which is a similar um, object storage. Uh, platform in the public cloud. So Cloudian is, is, uh, is based on the same APIs, but in your data center, under your control, and uh, under your, uh, for, uh, behind your firewalls. The use cases that you can do with Cloudian range from data protection, uh, ransomware compliance, all the way to Internet of Things with uh, things like media and entertainment and uh, security in the middle. Where does Cloudian fit? Um, so, from a, if you if you look at uh, data storage from a tiering perspective, you have the primary data tier, uh, primary storage tier, which is uh, typically uh, for the performance data, 
so you have your pure storage netapp nutanix uh, that fall into that tier and then you have the capacity tier so cloudian falls pretty much in the capacity tier and uh, we are uh, the storage that you will look at for large uh, capacities long a uh, big scalability and long term retention okay it is the solution for 80% of your data needs so how does data protection with cloudian work now cloudian uh, the platform is compatible with all s3 based uh, applications most of the backup applications that you have in the world uh, have a, an s3 uh, api support inbuilt today it is compatible with most of the major uh, data protection applications there they are starting with veeam rubrik comvault veritas and um, and if you look at it it is the it is the capacity uh, tier for any of these applications and it fits seamlessly uh within the data protection then so you would have your backup applications connect to your data sources and move it into cloudian seamlessly and cloudian at the back end can uh, also do hybrid uh, cloud uh, model for dr perspective right all of this is at 70% lesser cost than your regular backup plans and it is 100% 100 times faster than tape because it is an online storage system getting back to our uh, ransomware team uh, in 7.2 we introduced uh, the the feature s3 object lock within cloudian uh, s3 object lock is a standardized way of doing implementing worm in object storage system which is s3 compatible a uh, worm is uh, is the technology that allows you uh, allows us uh, a storage targets to become write once and read many um, storage uh, target by that i mean it's almost uh, once you write the data is within your storage system it becomes untamperable or unchangeable right with s3 lock, object lock you can do that exact thing at the object level so if you if you are unfamiliar with object storage systems everything within uh, within object storage system is stored in in the concept of buckets and objects this is similar to what you are used to in file systems as directories and files so directories are equivalent of buckets at a higher level and files are equivalent to objects um and within cloudian we have the capability of locking the data up uh, for a for a certain amount of time at the object level granularity and when you are locking up these objects you have the uh, the capability of uh, putting in um, the days or the time frame for which uh, this particular object is uh, in place uh, directly from the apis uh, at the beginning the s3 feature that uh, <coughs> that that uh, does this is uh, the s3 object lock again we offer two modes of protections um in the object lock phase uh, there is the governance mode um now this is the lesser restrictive mode for data protection and object locks objects are locked for a certain period of time and are protected against rogue users now in this mode you will you will still have access uh, as a privileged user if you have an administrative uh, access to be able to go and unlock the object that is uh, that has been locked for everybody else the objects are undeletable but for privileged users you still are able to unlock these objects and this mode is typically used let's say in the devops phase or it is used in the internal uh, internal threat phase where you are trying to block uh, one department uh, from deleting another department's uh, data but uh, you still need uh, your administrator to be able to go and uh, uh, make changes if required the more restrictive uh, mode is the compliance mode and sorry uh, wrong click uh, in in the compliance mode uh, you have the same uh, feature set as the governance mode so that you can lock uh, data at the object level 
and uh, this data is unchangeable by anybody but it goes beyond and it also disallows administrators or root uh, access uh, owners to be able to change the data this is the most stringent mode of uh, of object lock and uh, it is uh, also uh, very uh, imperative that uh, whenever uh, people are uh, implementing the compliance mode they are aware of what they're doing because the data is really untamperable uh, on that front so uh, another uh, aspect to think about is um, having s3 based object lock uh, does that protect you against all uh, kind of threads uh, in the in the ransomware space in the malware space well it's not just enough to have object lock or any kind of feature that locks up your data at the application level what happens if the hacker actually gets in to your network and uh, and uh, is able to go at the os level and uh, look at uh, at uh, potentially deleting your uh, your storage Uh, system itself well at that point any feature that you had in your storage was is lost and pretty much the data access that you had from your enterprise is also lost so how do you protect against that well we have regulation uh, regulatory requirements uh, from the uh, from from various agencies in the us government that talk about what actually constitute uh, to um, to being a worm enabled storage so cloudian in cloudian we we've, we've hardened our storage and we've we've created these uh, we've gone and uh, got certified on various regulatory requirements um, uh, ranging from sec finra and cftc requirements that certify that cloudian is 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 worm compliant and what that means is uh, when we ship uh, the cloudian system in worm mode Uh, we have strict uh, um, strict regulations that require even the root access not able not be able to delete data from the system and that's the only time when it's considered worm cloudian as a system is certified in these um, whereas some of the other object storage vendors are still working or uh, are behind the curve on this when we ship the system we also have uh, Uh, hardened security features enabled like secure shell integrated firewall iam access controls to give you complete uh, lockdown of the of the system when uh, you are running it in the worm mode and trying to secure your data against the threat of malware and ransomware so quickly from a workflow perspective how does how does it work uh, within cloudian to uh, lock up your data so everything starts up uh, starts with your backup so you have your backup system of choice veeam rubric veritas comvol that start the backup and uh, push the data into a bucket in cloudian now when you start this backup you um, you if you if you point your uh, uh, your target to be a bucket in cloudian and the, and, and if you enable object lock on the bucket anything that's falling into that bucket is is locked for the duration that has been set during the bucket creation time now even if ransomware gets uh, a, a hacker gets into your system whether it's for ransomware or some kind of malware they will not be able to modify your data in in a sense it is tamper proof data at that point even your applications uh, like uh, the rubrics of the world the veeams of the world will not be able to delete this data because uh, it is uh, completely locked up uh, for that uh, we actually require customers to enable a separate license on cloudian it is more so that the customers are aware that they're locking up their data uh, than uh, anything else and if you do get hit by ransomware you don't need to be worried because you can restore a clean copy in a matter of minutes at that point because this data is completely tamper proof one one uh, plug here is that veeam v10 also does support s3 object lock directly uh, and uh, has direct uh, a connection with the cloudian seamlessly uh, to create these uh, object lock flows seamlessly 
And along with that, uh, the Cloudian system does come with uh, extreme scalability. So you can do all of the things that we talked about where, uh, and, and start really, really small. You can start with a system which has a three-node cluster uh, with, uh, with uh, close to 100 terabytes uh, and scale, lead, um, scale out uh, in the hundreds of petabyte uh, range. We actually have customers using Cloudian uh, that uh, have clusters in the 200 plus petabyte range. And you can grow in small steps and the performance grows as you actually uh, implement your uh, uh, cluster. Now, the object lock can be placed uh, at any granularity. So you can, you can, you can have uh, part of the cluster uh, having the lock and the other part being open uh, for more dev, DevOps kind of applications. Um, we also have integrated uh, search and analytics within Cloudian. So within the object storage system, uh, the data is stored uh, with, with three components. So you have just the raw data, you have the object ID, as well as you have uh, customizable metadata that can be uh, stored directly with the object. What that does is it makes it easier for you to search through the data that's stored within the object storage system and find uh, anything that you're looking for. Uh, Cloudian, we also have integration uh, for metadata search through Elasticsearch, and uh, we can also visualize the data with Kibana. We also have uh, other uh, tools that uh, help you visualize and manage the data that's uh, within Cloudian, making it uh, an easy and searchable database of and the data protection, now, what we also offer within Cloudian is uh, protecting your data within the cluster. So we have capabilities to uh, do replicated copies of data that are spread across uh, the distributed cluster, uh, as well as uh, you have the option of using erasure coding, which is a more efficient uh, methodology of protecting your data against site failures, node failures, and so on and so forth. And finally, we talked about this. Uh, we are cloud ready. So whether it's, uh, it's uh, creating a private cloud or a hybrid cloud, multi-cloud environment, we do support um, Azure, AWS, as well as GCP um, to, to enable customers to, do, uh, um, to be cloud ready. Quick plug on why customers choose us. Um, so the biggest thing that we hear is the highest S3 API compatibility. Most of the applications today that are being written are being written for, uh, for a cloud perspective. S3 is the de facto uh, standard API for the cloud. Any application that has been written for the cloud will run seamlessly on Cloudian, and any application that has been uh, vice versa, any application that's been written on Cloudian will seamlessly work with, uh, with the public cloud. From that perspective, we have the highest uh, compatibility, and this is something that our customers keep talking about on a regular basis. We also have compatibility with file as well as object storage uh, methodologies. Uh, with Cloudian, you can start small, as small as a three-node cluster and go into hundreds and almost thousands of nodes right now. Um, you can manage at a granular level, whether it is uh, an object lock that you face at 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 a at a at an ob as granular as an object level or other policies that can you can define, uh, you can do it uh, very granularly. <clears throat> we are hybrid cloud ready uh, with inbuilt data protection, and offer 14 lines of durability, and all of this at a low cost of less than half a cent per gigabyte per month. And this is uh, based on how you can scale up your data. And the more you, you put in Cloudian, the, the, the more economical it gets. With that, uh, I'm going to leave you with, uh, with our final slide, which talks about how Cloudian is easy to manage and grow, has a great rich feature set, including object lock to protect your data in these uncertain times, and it is proven uh, with deployments worldwide. That's the presentation for today. Now I'm going to run into our first question, which is, how is data protected from rogue or disgruntled administrator? Uh, 
Yeah, sure. So I, I touched on this very, very uh, briefly. Um, when we ship Cloudian in the worm mode, uh, you are looking at, uh, at at a specific license. And uh, as the the system is shipped in worm mode, uh, it will come with a disabled root access. So even your administrator will not be able to get root access. And now if you're looking at a disgruntled employee, it's a disgruntled administrator at that level. They will not have the access to get to a level where you, you are going to delete your data, right? The system is verified compliant with the non-rewritable and non-erasable storage requirements of SEC 17A4 and CFTC rules, right? This has been verified by Coasset Associates, a third-party government assessment agency. Uh, this certification that we've been working on has been in the works for, for over two years now. It cost us more than a couple of million dollars to do this. And this goes through uh, not just seeing if the feature actually does uh, the, the root access disablement, but it actually goes through the software development processes that were implemented at Cloudian, uh, including the practices, the processes, the coding standards, the testing standards, and so on and so forth. So from that perspective, uh, the system has been uh, hardened and verified hardened. And even if you have a disgruntled administrator, they will not be able to access it, provided you have set the lock on the, uh, on the object in compliance mode to begin with. Okay? Great. Thanks so much, Amit. Uh, we have another question that just came in here. Do you offer a pay-as-you-go plan? Um, yeah, we do have, uh, so actually we have, I, I did have a, a slide on that and I did not, uh, I breezed through it because I thought I was uh, being too laborious. So Cloudian comes in uh, multiple deployment options. So we do have uh, our own appliance um, and uh, we started off as a software defined storage company. So you can actually uh, take uh, soft, uh, buy our software and uh, do a subscription on a year uh, on a yearly basis and get your own appliance but uh, more recently we have uh, strategically partnered with vmware and uh, we have a true consumption model from vmware so if you go into uh, into the vmware vcd offering uh, of object storage under the hood it is uh, cloudian and that is your uh, pure pay as you go model um, that uh, we offer to our customers. So yes, we do have a pay-as-you-go model, and it is a true consumption model uh, where you can uh, get Cloudian in a consumption manner. Okay. Thank you, Amit. We have a couple more questions that just came through. Do you support Dell EMC data remover software products? Uh, sure. Um, as long as I'm not very familiar with them, but as long as uh, um, you have, uh, if they support S3 uh, as as an API, we we will we will work with them. Again, we are the most compliant S3 object storage vendor out there. So any application that supports S3, we work with it seamlessly. Um, and uh, I'm pretty sure Dell EMC should be supporting uh, uh, S3 as an API protocol. So we should be able to work. Just that uh, we'll have to just figure it out uh, from. A, quick test perspective, but uh, I don't see why, why we should not. Okay. Great. We have time for just one more question from the audience. It is, our organization uses tape for protection against ransomware. How is the solution you talked about different or better? That's actually a good question um, because tapes have traditionally been a means to protect data against ransomware, right? Um, well, if you you're okay with tapes, uh, that that's fine. But you know there are there are definitely challenges with tapes. Um, tapes do get corrupt from time to time. They're usually stored offsite in some kind of a um, a vault or what have you, right? And uh, from time to time, you have to make sure that uh, the veracity of the data in the tapes is maintained. Uh, tapes do get corrupt. They get spoiled, and uh, you have to make sure that you have a touch point. Um, to to look at the tapes uh, and the condition on an on an ongoing basis. In addition, uh, the tapes that you uh, you create and uh, lock up in a vault today uh, may or may not be uh, be 
compatible with the tape reading technology that uh, that will be available when you are trying to retrieve it so uh, as you go from ltfs 6 to 8 to whatever comes next uh, you may or may not have the compatibility to um, use the data that you put on the lock and key and you may need uh, a, a, an ongoing recording effort to make sure you're m- most uh, up to date so that you can read your tape and finally of course not to be labor the point it is a physical manual process to retrieve data from tape it is not an online storage it is it is very time consuming it is uh, it is truck roll most of the times and it is it can get expensive from a from a personnel perspective to do this with object lock and cloudian you're getting the same or better data immutability with an always online backup copy right this can be built even matter of minutes uh, you are not talking about uh, having to update the data uh, as the as a newer version of uh, um, cloudian comes out for example um, and uh, also from a tco perspective you are not uh, sending a truck uh, a truck roll to to retrieve your your tapes out of uh, uh, the vault so your tco as compared to tapes if you account for everything including the manual effort is definitely much lower for an object storage which is online and can be retrieved with a click of a button than uh, you have with tape so overall you do get immutability uh, uh, as you would in tape but it, it it's a much better solution and it's a much more uh, um in with the technology solution so to speak thank you amit That concludes our event, Virtual Petabytes and Popcorn, Protect Your Data During Uncertain Time with Cloudian. If you do have any additional questions, please be sure to reach out to us at info at cloudian.com. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. Have a great rest of your day.